Okay, let's try that. Okay, so my name is Carrie Putman, and this session is full time to freelance practical and self care advice when the nine to five needs to stop. And so let me tell you a little bit, bit about my freelance story. 25 years ago, I developed my first professional website. Now, I know this looks state of the art. This is 1997, okay? And that's not even the first one. The first one I did was in 93. So, um, it's something I ended up doing by chance. My, my degree's actually in psychology, and it turned out to be something that I love to do. So, over the years, I learned all I could about programming, database development, and project management. I worked mostly as a government contractor, but my last position was a senior programmer analyst at a credit union. Now, around the same time that I developed that first website, I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease. And it's something I ended up having by genetic chance. And it's completely changed my life. Now, it's an autoimmune disease of the digestive system, and I can explain it in two slides. This is what most people's digestive system looks like. And that's what mine feels like. Over all those years as a full-time developer, I had eight surgeries. I had more hospitalizations and ER visits than I could count. And I had several stints on short-term disability. Each time that I took leave, my plan was to get better and deafen everybody. Yes, unfortunately, we had to be mic'd for two, two things. Okay, so try that again. So, every time that I took leave, my plan was to take this mic off. Can y'all hear me without this? Try it again. Okay. Okay, how about now? Uh, can you hear me? Awesome, good deal. Okay, so like I said, my goal was to always get back to work. But two years ago, it became obvious that that was not working for me anymore, that my health issues were incompatible with working full time. So there was a decision about what I was going to do. And like most people who were on the internet in the 90s, I messed around with some of the blog software. Does anybody remember movable type? Oh, God, I am the oldest person in the room. Okay, so that was the first thing I used. But then I used WordPress, and I loved it from the first time that I used it. So my husband and I had a lot of discussions, and I felt that a lot of the businesses and organizations where we're from, we're from Decatur, Alabama, were priced out of the custom website development market. And the only, thing they, only options they had were to either use something like Squarespace or, or hire GoDaddy. So after a lot of long discussions, we decided that I would quit full-time work and work part-time as a freelancer doing WordPress development. There are many reasons why people decide to become a freelancer. Some, like me, do it because their health issues have become manageable. Others leave because they have children or adult family members who need care. There's those who current work situations are stressful and unhealthy. There's some that just want to retire early. And there's others who want to be their own bosses and have the infamous four-hour work week. But there, to me, are a few important advantages to being a freelancer. First of all, it's a good way to remain productive because more than one in four 20-year-olds today will spend at least one year on disability leave before they retire. And in 2014, 6.5% of people 16 or older reported that they couldn't work at all due to a disabling condition. So if you're like me and you find that you can't work full-time anymore, Freelancing gives you an opportunity to work at least part-time and remain productive. And actually, people with disabilities are more likely to work part-time and they're more likely to be self-employed. You also have the ability to have a flexible schedule. 
Again, in 2014, 5.4% of people, 16 and older, reported that home responsibilities were a reason that they had left the workforce. And since 1990, women re primarily have reported that taking care of a family member was the reason that they had stopped working. If you freelance, you're you have the ability to create your own schedule and take care of those responsibilities, which is something a nine to five job almost virtually makes impossible. For me, freelancing means that I can make doctor and treatment appointments and I can be um, I can rest and take off time for illness without having to worry about whether I have sick days or having to file for FMLA leave. And then of course there's being your own boss because everyone dreams of running their own show and freelancing gives you the opportunity to do that. You can leave a stressful situation over which you feel you have little to no control and do something that you love. Even though I've been a web developer for 25 years, the majority of that time was spent as a government contractor. So the websites that I did were limited use and I couldn't show them to anybody. But now, it makes me happy that I can create websites for small businesses, help them become successful, and I can show other people. The first time I saw the URL of a site I created on a billboard, I was happy for days, called everybody I knew. You have to go down 6th Avenue. There's a billboard. It has a URL that I created on it. And feel free to stop me if you have any questions at any point. Um, no matter the reason that you choose to move from full-time work to freelancing, you can't make that decision in a vacuum. The transition is something that affects everything in your life, and you need input and support to make the decision. And here are some important things that you need to consider before you turn in your resignation. Money. You need to be very conservative in your estimates of your fu future freelance income. And if possible, you need to try to save at least six to 12 months of bills. Also, learn all you can about finance and tax implications as a freelancer, because you don't wanna take all that money that you've saved and turn around and pay it to the IRS. Take a long look at what you want to charge for your work. Don't simply take your current hourly wage and multiply it by a random number. You have to take into account taxes and you have to take into account expenses that you'll incur. Finally, try to make any business or home office purchases while you still have a full-time income, especially for large purchases such as a computer, because it could be a while before you make enough freelancing to make those purchases later. Insurance. If you depend on your job for insurance, especially health and life, make sure you have some sort of coverage lined up. Move to a spouse's policy, which is what I did, Make sure you have continuation coverage or make other arrangements. You do not want to be caught with no way to pay large medical bills and you don't want to leave your fi family unprotected financially in case something should happen to you. Networking before you leave your full-time job is important. As a full-time employee, you're often not the one that gets the work you're the one that does the work. But once you become a freelancer, you have to do both things. Begin networking before you leave your job. Go to local meetups, reach out to an IT or marketing firm that doesn't have their own web developers on staff. Make sure there's a market for what you wanna do before you rely on that to pay your bills later. It's also important to reach out to groups for continuing education. Word camps like this are an excellent way to do that. Not only do you get to network with other bloggers, designers, and developers, but you also get to keep up to date with the latest in the WordPress world. Finally, check into your local business incubators and co-working groups. 
They can offer invaluable information to starting your own business. For example, in Decatur, they have the Decatur Entrepreneurial Center, and they offer a class called Business 101. It teaches you everything you need to know to start your own business. So now you've thought about all those things, you've made any kind of arrangements you need to make, and you're ready to resign your job. Now there's a way to do it, and there's a way not to do it. Let's try again. So don't quit like that. Don't, don't do that when you resign. You don't want to burn bridges. Even though you may not anticipate returning to full-time work, you should manage this resignation as you would any other. You may need a referral from that company, or if circumstances change, you may even want to return to work. So if possible, give a nice standard notice and don't kick the wastebasket on the way out. When you're a freelancer, you're likely going to work from home. And it's a completely different work reality than a 9 to 5 office gig. Even with the best intentions, it's easy to become distracted, sidelined, or even depressed. There's some co and these are some of the common potholes that you may encounter. Not selling yourself. Like I said before, once you're a freelancer, you're your own sales force and you can't wait for work to come to you. You have to come out of your shell and learn to talk about yourself, your skills, and your fees. It's awkward, especially if you're an introvert, or like me, you've been a web developer for 20-something years and never talked to anybody. You have to learn how to talk. If you can't tell people what you do, and more importantly, what you charge to do it, you're not gonna have any work coming in. Spending like you still work full time, it's a big problem. Even if you're not the sole breadwinner, going from having a regular full time paycheck to getting paid when you can get work is a huge financial shock. You can't spend assuming that you're gonna make that money up later. Doing too much. Don't forget why it was you wanted to quit your job in the first place. If you're chronically ill like me, take care of yourself. If you're a caretaker for a family member, make your freelance work revolve around those tasks rather than the other way around. After I left my job, I tried to do everything that I didn't have the energy to do while I was working full time. I was washing clothes, I was running errands, volunteering at church, walking the dog, and I overlooked the fact that I was taking my nine to five job and swapping it for the same number of hours of other work. I paid for it by getting sick, which was what I was trying to avoid. Isolation. No matter how much you may not want to, even programmers at a full-time job have to interact with people daily. And the friends that you've made while working are often still working full-time. And so they're not people that you can interact with when you're a freelancer as much. As a freelancer, it's easy to close off and only interact with your computer.
So in addition to avoiding those particular potholes, there are also some suggestions to make your freelance work as productive as it can be. Create a dedicated space to work. This is actually my desk at home. That is a Yoda yard statue behind my laptop. I was afraid it would get stolen if I actually put it in the yard. So, um, My original place to program was in a recliner in front of the television set. And as a person with fatigue problems, how successful, successful do you think I was at that? Not very. I got lots of naps in though, but didn't get a lot of work done. So, my husband has created a home office for me. And it's where I have a specific place to work and not for Netflix and chill. When I'm in the office, my husband and my dog, who actually has a bed in my office, knows I'm in work mode. And if I'm in there too long, they know to come lure me out and make me rest and interact with the rest of the world. And your mind needs that demarcation as well. Your office tells your brain that it's time to concentrate and get to work. You want to document, oh, I'm sorry, I skipped ahead, I apologize. Try to schedule a regular time to work. Again, you wanted to be a freelancer for a reason. Make sure to accommodate that in the work schedule that you create. Making a schedule also allows everyone else to know everyone else to know when to give you space to work. I work from morning to lunch and then again in the early evenings while my husband's at CrossFit. I have time to take care of myself, which was again my goal. And like I said, he knows to leave me alone and let me work. Also, if you have trouble getting motivated at the beginning of your day, there's a method called Miracle Morning. And you can look into that, I'll have a link at the end. But it, it's a, a method for getting yourself motivated in the mornings and getting your day started. And that may help you if you have trouble with that. Document everything, especially financial information. Buy a notebook, start a bullet journal. Get an app and enter all your daily tasks. Most importantly, create a system for tracking your project information. And if you buy a plugin or pay for hosting, keep track of all those expenses. If you document as you go, then when you get to the end of a project or the end of the fiscal year, you're not going to have to stress out and try to remember what it is you did and why you did it. Set realistic goals. Freelancing can be stressful enough without putting undue pressure on yourself. Based on your priorities and your market, set goals that are attainable. It's okay to be optimistic. It's practically a requirement for a freelancer. But you need to ba balance that optimism with realism or you're just setting yourself up to fail. Give yourself solid milestones Celebrate your achievements, and you'll be more motivated in the end. Now, whether you work full-time for someone else or you're a freelancer, it's important to practice self-care to help manage stress and its effects on your health. This not only helps you, but everyone who depends on you. And here are some ways that are important for caring for yourself. No jammies. Get out of your pajamas. It's very tempting when you work from home to just stay in your pajamas or some ratty clothes all day because you're comfortable. And who doesn't want to be comfortable? But again, your brain takes cues from your environment, and that includes how you dress. Now, I'm not saying you need to put on a three-piece suit every time you're ready to go in the home office. But, you know, at least brush your hair, put on some clothes you'd wear to the grocery store. Because you don't want to rush around looking for suitable clothes if you have a last minute video conference. Yeah. 
Make time for yourself that isn't work. Everyone needs time to decompress, so make sure you're taking some time away from work and from responsibilities on a regular basis. Read a book, watch a movie, Netflix and chill, just not in your home office. Anything to lower your stress and relax your mind. And being a freelancer doesn't mean that you can't take a few days off. Take short trips, and if you can, plan a longer vacation. If you don't take time off, you're going to burn out. Get out of the house. If you're working from home, it's easy to forget there's a world away from your office and your computer. And I'll, if you get too isolated, you could miss important changes in the market or your field. Have lunch with your friends, go to local events, attend WARN camps. There's a WordCamp in Nashville in December. It's important to maintain contact with the outside world, not only for business, but for your own sanity. Get some sunshine and take some naps. Vitamin D is, an important, is important in bone health and calcium absorption, and the best source for vitamin D is sunlight. Also, sunlight's a mood elevator. So put on some sunscreen and get a little bit of sunshine every day. Also, take a nap if you need it. Naps can restore alertness and help you relax. You may not be able to schedule one every day, but it's valuable if you're running low on energy. Meditate. If you want to improve your concentration and lower stress, Meditation is a great way to do that. You can take as little time or as much time to do that as you want. You can use a guided meditation or you can just sit and listen to music. It's a way to quiet your mind and it's been shown to help metabolism and reduce pain. There are a ton of meditation apps available, so just go try some out and pick out your favorite. My favorite is Budify, which has Guided meditations in a number of categories, and some of these are to help sleep, stress, and pain. You can even ask Alexa or Google Home to help you meditate. Breathe. The transition from full-time employment to freelancing is doable, but it's important to plan and save the best that you can most importantly, it's, the, it's important, try that again. Most importantly, remember why it is that you want to freelance in the first place and what you want to accomplish by doing it. Set your priorities, take care of yourself, and make your work fit into that. So I had a link at the beginning, and these are the citation, it was you download the slides, these are the citations to the employment statistics I talked about earlier. And then here are some useful links. Unsplash, if you've never looked at Unsplash, it is a place to get really nice free stock photos. And so all my lovely photos, except for obviously my desk and the mem, um, is from Unsplash. I mentioned bullet journaling. Does anybody in here do that? Okay, bullet journaling is awesome, especially if you're like me and you can't remember stuff half the time. It's a very good method to, to, to keep up with your tasks. And if you go to bulletjournal.com, it'll tell you everything you need to know about how to do that. The next, the next link, again, is Miracle Morning. That was what I discussed um, earlier. It's a method to get you motivated in the mornings. And a lot of people say that that's really helped them with their work. and. One of the things it includes, which is the next link, one of the things that's included in the Miracle Morning is spending time in meditation. So that next link is an article about the benefits of meditation. Okay, the last link is to my favorite, my favorite meditation app, which is Budify. They just released a brand new version. It's very nice. And then here's my contact information. 
I'm currently doing freelance work through Pro Computer Services and Best Seller Media. Like I said earlier, try to partner with somebody who doesn't have their own developer. That would be him. He doesn't have his own. He runs Pro Computer Services. So I, I work with him and do his sites for his uh, customers. And my personal portfolio site and my Twitter handle. And I know I talked really fast. I'm sorry. So does anybody have any questions? I missed the early part. Are you from the Atlanta area? No, I'm, at, I'm from Decatur, Alabama, which is about 30 miles southwest of Huntsville. When you said Decatur, I thought I might have Yeah, the thing about the, the area up there is that Decatur is kind of a small town, but Huntsville is a big town where all the tech companies are, and NASA, and an Army base. So if, you work, if you're in Decatur and you're a tech person, you most likely work in Huntsville. And so that also adds to the stress of a full-time job up there because you have to drive back and forth to Huntsville every day. So once you become freelance and you have your list of tasks and stuff to do, mm -hmm. how do you set goals for yourself to make improvements every, every year in how you're building your business? How do you stay on track? How do you know that you're actually accomplishing what you want to do? Well, that's the importance of documenting everything. You have to... Um, Keep up with the people you've talked to. It's basic, basically a sales funnel. You have to keep up with who you've talked to, who you've sent proposals to, follow up with people who don't respond, people who say no. If, I haven't been able to do this yet, but you should ask them why they said no. I'm still getting there. But you haven't been able to do it because you haven't had the opportunity? No, I'm scared to ask people why they said no, to be perfectly honest. Like I said, I'm a, I'm, for 25 years, I was a hardcore coder, and talking to people was not my forte. And that is the biggest problem I've had as a freelancer, is talking to people. If I can talk to other tech people, I'm okay. And I have a really hard time talking about money. I have, oh, I know what I should charge. It's telling other people, this is what I charge that I have a problem with. Yeah, I'm very nervous. It makes me very nervous still. So... He helps me with that too. But th yeah, that's, th that's one of the things you have to track too is why people said no. And so I've set a certain goal for myself based on this is the amount of money I need to pay what I have to pay every month because the reason I'm doing it is not to, you know, to fund a whole household. I'm freelancing because my health didn't allow me to work full time anymore. So. If you're doing it, however, because you're going to be the sole breadwinner and you need to make a certain amount of money, then you have to sit down and figure out how many websites you need to sell. Like my number of websites I need to sell a month is going to be way lower than somebody else who is doing it as a sole breadwinner of a family. So you've really got to track that whole sales process so that you can try to figure out if you're not selling, why you're not. If it's an issue with communication, you're not communicating your skills well, you're charging too much. Um, for instance, in our town, um, people often say, like the incubator, where they have the business 101, they call it a Walmart town, because people want to pay Walmart prices for everything, and it doesn't matter what your service is. So you, know, you have a hard time in the actual city of Decatur sometimes selling a professional service, so you have to go outside the city of Decatur. And so knowing that kind of thing and tracking that kind of thing really helps. Yeah, that's part of your market research. To be honest, the other thing that I struggle with, again, as somebody who really didn't, I've never had to do sales kind of things before, are clients who say, I want you to do this, and who will even pay my deposit, but then never give me anything to do the website with. And so they've paid me part of their money, and I communicate with them on a regular basis, and they're like, well, not just yet, we'll get back to you. Yeah, it's amazing, but it happens. And so that's another thing I've struggled with is 
trying to, that fine line of, okay, it's been this many months since you gave me this much money to do this job that you still haven't given me the information for. And like, if you've gone um, to any of Nathan's talks, Nathan Ingram, the organizer, or if you've seen any of his webcasts, he has, he has a date by which if you don't give him your stuff, you forfeited your deposit. And I'm not, <laughs> that's another place, I'm not there yet where I can just say, you know, I know you've given me a couple of thousand dollars, but it's been six months and you haven't given me anything else I, could, I need to do my job, so you forfeited your deposit. But that is something that, like I said, people recommend. And that's something you tell them from the outset though, right? Right. Right, no, you have to tell them from the outset. Yeah, and even if I had told them from the outset, I'd still wouldn't. I, I'm, I really struggle with money talk. I'm gonna, that is my weakness. Because as a, as a developer, there was somebody else that did all that for me. I just did the work. So talking about money makes me nervous. So, anybody else got a question? So is everybody else still working full time? You are? Yeah, it, one of the things too that, that's hard about freelancing is, is the motivation. Because when you're full time, you've got somebody there. Your stuff done, you've got weekly meetings, give them your status. You know, as a freelancer, you're on your, most of the time you're pretty much on your own. So, if you don't keep up with your schedule and you don't keep up with your tasks and how long things are taking, you may find yourself where it's like, oh, I told them this would be done, oh, Friday, and it's Thursday, and I don't have it done. And it's, that's a big part of freelancing is the motivating yourself and keeping up with your own schedule. Because as a full-time full -time employee, you've always got somebody reminding you. So where do you find your clients? Well, Originally, my clients were, we had joined a, okay, preface this with, if you're in BNI, I apologize. We joined a BNI chapter, and that was where I got my original customers, but the thing about BNI, that, at least on my part, I feel it's not very technical oriented, so I had a very, depends on the chapter, the two chapters that we were in were not technically oriented. So we had a hard time explaining to people what it is we did. And then the other thing is it gets back to, but I can do this on Squarespace. And it doesn't cost me but five bucks a month. Oh, yeah, it's not, because it's completely different. Or, well, I had one person tell me, GoDaddy will only charge me $1,000 for a full e-commerce website. Well, then you let them do it. That's the other thing. You've got to be willing just to cut your losses and say, Nope, I'm not going to get in a bidding war with GoDaddy because you're most likely not going to win. And if you do win, you're going to regret it because you're going to be charging so little for your time. I'll be honest, most of my customers are people who have gotten websites kind of like that, like at a Wix or a cheap developer, and now it doesn't work and they needed somebody to do a website that works. How are they finding you? Well, originally through B&I. Okay. And it's, part of that's the networking process. You know, we network with, you know. With her, she's under the, uh, under the name of Pro Computer Services. That's my business. We've been in business providing IT services since 1999. And that's what I said about partnering. And so if you, can, if you can find somebody like that to partner with, like we also, I also have another friend that's an IT service provider, but he doesn't do websites. So if he gets somebody that needs a website, he's going to call me. So it's, it's good to network with people who are in a similar field, but don't do necessarily the exact same thing you do. Because when they have somebody that comes to them and say, that says, I need a website, and they don't know how to do it, they're going to call me. Right. 
Right. I think it comes to that question all the time. Hey, I want to love somebody. You know someone. So I would put that business forward, make a relationship with that business owner, and say, hey, this is going to be your web work. And it might be any favor to put a new computer or, or what have you, software or something. I think that it's And one thing to consider, too, which is, is something that, that I'm – I'm looking at right now is to concentrate on a vertical because otherwise you've got this like shotgun approach where you're just trying to any website I just need to make the bills for this month and so I'll do it I don't care but at some point you're gonna be more effective if you can concentrate on a vertical market so I am going to concentrate on authors who need websites that have specific information they're set up a specific way I have friends who are authors I know how this needs to be done and so I know those organizations that I can market to directly rather than, like I said, just trying to just like, please let me do your website, you know, kind of, kind of approach. Because it doesn't, it'll work for a little while, and everybody does that at the beginning. Everybody's just like, I'll do whatever you want me to do. You want me to do a landing page? I'll do it. And it'll, you want, want me to do it for $700? Great. I need money. And you'll do it. But at some point, you have to get, you get past that and you learn where you want to focus. I have not hard coded any, uh, let me rephrase that. I haven't done any ASP.NET websites in two years. I do everything in WordPress now. And originally, this is kind of technical, but originally I was buying themes because I'm a developer, not a designer. So, you see, you can usually tell when a developer's designed a website because we're not the most artistic people in the world. So I would rely on themes that I would buy. And then what would happen is, is that theme developer would all of a sudden go, eh, I don't want to support this anymore. And you couldn't get updates. So now what I do is I use a builder. The one I happen to use is Elementor. There's, you know, Beaver Builder, there's Divi, there's different ones. And it actually, I've gotten to where I can put together a pretty decent website, I mean, pretty decent looking website. It doesn't look like a developer did it necessarily. And so that's why I use WordPress with Elementor. And that's what I'm using on all my websites now. Yeah, and it, it's quicker, you know. And usually what I would do with a theme anyway is I would get it and I would have to go in and change 20 things that I wanted to tweak. So now with the builder, I can do what I want to do the way I want to do it from the get go. Any other questions? <laughs> well, I appreciate it, y'all. Uh, this is my first talk ever, and I was very, very nervous. Well, I did a meetup demo one time. This is the first time I've ever talked at WordCamp, so I was extremely nervous, and I appreciate y'all all being patient with me. And like I said, um, there's my contact info. If there's anything, you need you can tell, now you can tell me it's five minutes left. If you need any, you know, an ear to 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 talk to or just have a question, um, just let me know. Email me. I'm around. Like I said, I'm working from home, and pretty much, you know, this is my concentration is WordPress. So definitely, you know, if you need some advice, feel free to to email me. So thank you very much.